Hi, I'm Lauren Grace, and welcome to The Afterlight. I'm joined today by Mark Anthony, not the singer, who is an international teacher and speaker and is the founder of Co-Creation. Co-Creation is one of the world's leading theta healing training organizations. 17 years ago, he was diagnosed with an incurable infection, osteomyelitis. I might have Mark re-explain that word to me in a minute. He was then introduced to theta healing and it transformed his life. As a teacher and speaker, he empowers people to heal and transform their lives and create lives they love. He's been invited to speak and train in more than 20 countries and has the ability to bridge the gap between science and spirituality. Theta healing is a simple technique in meditation that allows you to create incredible changes in your life quickly and effortlessly. Mark has helped people heal from chronic stress, limiting beliefs, fears, anxieties, to improving and attracting loving relationships, creating success, financial abundance, and finding their life's purpose. And Mark is joining me now. We're going to be talking about all things Theta Healing. What is it exactly? What can it do for you? And how Mark uh, discovered Theta Healing. And we'll see what else sort of comes up. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Uh, Thank you, Lauren. It's great to be here. So how do you pronounce that word I messed up? Uh, it's osteomyelitis. Okay, and what is that? Yeah, so osteomyelitis is just basically a bone infection. Okay. And uh, and when I got sick, it was in my vertebrae, so it was called vertebral osteomyelitis. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, we're going to find out all about that in a minute. Mark, one of the things I love to do on the show is initially sort of finding out about how people's spiritual journey began. For some people, it's that you know, dark night of the soul for, for other people, they, they were awakened from the very beginning for other people, you know, it's kind of an ebb and flow on their journey. How did, did it sort of kick off with you and did it start with, um, with theta healing or did it sort of start before you discovered that? Yeah. Um, look, look, my, my start or introduction into spirituality is a little bit embarrassing to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> There's no judgment here. <laughs> I actually came, well, I was brought up in a very Catholic family. So, you know, going to church every Sunday, etc. And then at the age of 21, I met a girl who was into spirituality. And 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 this is the embarrassing part. I thought she was a weirdo. Right. That's okay. We all have that sort of title, I think. <laughs> and um and and I, I told her, I said, I think you're a weirdo, but and and she said, well, if you don't like it, see you later. And I thought, well, oh, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she was a really nice girl. And I thought, you know, maybe I should have a look at what she's doing. And so I started to, well, we actually enrolled in a parapsychology course together. Oh. And uh, one of the first lessons that they taught was about intuition and they mentioned gut feelings and all of a sudden the light bulb came on for me mm-hmm. because that was something that I'd experienced in my life. I had no idea where it came from or how it got there, but I just knew when I got those gut feelings, I had to trust, trust them. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I needed to understand what was happening because um, I've, I've actually studied as an engineer. So my background is actually engineering. I had my own business in the construction industry and having that engineering mind it was like well these people are talking about like this gut feeling i've experienced that and i've had incredible results based on following that gut feeling and so these people are talking about being able to use that in your day-to-day life so i needed to understand that so that was where my spiritual awakening sort of began yeah and um um, go ahead (laughs) And, and look, it was a really interesting journey, and that sort of led me to Theta Healing, but it wasn't for a number of years till a number of years later. Yeah. Um, so it was basically I was studying. I, I wanted to understand how it all worked, how the intuition side of things worked. So what I did was I, I everything that I could study metaphysically, I was there. Whatever speakers were coming to Australia, whatever books I could get my hands on, And I was also looking into quantum physics as well to understand that side of things too. And, you know, it was, it was more or less, I was interested, but I wasn't committed. If that makes sense. Yeah. You're dabbling, let's say. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, 
And then, um, and then what happened was I was feeling very run down. I was getting to the, like I was working really long hours in my business and I was renovating our house at the time because we were looking at upgrading and I was just feeling really run down. So I went to see my chiropractor. He did a treatment on me. I went home. An hour later, I felt all this pain across my, my back. So next day, I went back to see him. I said, look, you know, whatever you've done, just fix it up. Oh. And it didn't get any better. And so what ended up happening was I had to go see the doctors because his pain was actually getting worse. And, and they sent me for a bone scan. And what they found was there was a fracture on my left rib, two fractures on my right rib and a fracture on the vertebrae. So from an over-aggressive manipulation, I ended up with four fractures. Now, before we go any further, I just want to stress that like chiropractors are amazing. It was just this particular person, the way they were operating was like a body shop. So he'd have me in one room, he'd have two other people in another room all at the same time. And he'd just be rushing from one person. Oh to the my next. God. Oh. Yeah. So the way he was operating was unethical. I've I've got a lot of friends that are chiropractors and they're really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Where I, was I, your I, intuition there, Mark? That's what I want to know. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was a perfect manifestation, right? Because what happened was the doctors told me six to eight weeks you'd be better. Six weeks goes by, eight weeks goes by, no improvement. If anything, the pain's getting worse. So I go back to the doctors. The doctor was just telling me the only reason why you're in pain is because you're not active. I nearly went crazy because you know your body. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, this guy's just trying to palm it off that I'm just not being active. So, you know, that's why I've still got pain. And so I basically demanded an MRI scan. He sent me to a back specialist who sent me for an MRI scan and a back x-ray. The back x-ray, I went and did that first, and the, the radiographer sits about five metres away from me. And he says, look, Mark, he says, it's totally up to you. You can go and see your local doctor tomorrow, but they're going to do exactly the same thing for you. He said, I've already rung the hospital and told them that you're on your way. There's an infection inside your vertebrae that's eating away at the bones, and it looks oh. like you've got TB. And so the positive for that out of me was I had no idea what TB was. Yeah. <laughs> but he sounded really serious. I thought maybe I should go and to the hospital. So I go to the hospital. They put a face mask on me. They make me sit away from everybody else. And then they do all the tests for tuberculosis. Thankfully, I didn't have that. And then they started doing all these other tests and, uh, they did what they call a fine needle biopsy where the fine needle is about 30 centimeters long oh, and it's that. about five millimeters thick. So I'd hate to see the big needle if that's the fine one. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so they were pushing this needle into my spine to get a sample of the infection. They take the infection, put it in a controlled environment. It grows. They know what the infection is. They give you the antibiotic to treat it and happy days. Right. Yeah. So they did that procedure, and unfortunately, in my situation, nothing grew, so they didn't know what the infection was. So all of a sudden, they decided to do a different biopsy where they were just going to put three holes in my side, put a camera in there, take a sample of the infection, and same process, see what grows. Worst case scenario, if they had to cut me open, it was going to be a two-centimeter cut. So... I go in for this procedure, and when I come out of this procedure, I've got two tubes coming out my side that are draining the blood and everything because they had to collapse my lung to do the procedure. Okay. I've got a button for morphine, and I've got a twenty centimeter scar across the back of my across my back. So worst case scenario was two centimeters. I've got a twenty centimeter cut. Wow. Yeah. And and so the doctors a few days later come in, they say, you know, the good news is you don't have cancer, which was a shock because I had no idea they were testing for cancer. Right. Yeah. The, the bad news is we didn't take enough sample to test for anything else. So they wanted to repeat the procedure seven days later. And luckily for me in that seven-day period, I ended up getting a fever. So in Australia, if you get a fever in hospital, 
they have to treat you. They have to give you some sort of antibiotic. So they gave me a really high dosage antibiotic and it was a six week treatment. And so they said, look, you take this antibiotic at the end of the six weeks, the infection will be gone. It'll take about a year for the bones to regenerate, not to completely heal. So I start taking this medication and while I'm in hospital, I look up vertebral osteomyelitis. And one of the first things it says is that if it's not treated, it's fatal. So that was the big deal because I had a lot of faith in the medical industry. They gave me the magic pills that I was taking and yeah, you know, it was just a matter of getting through that and then the infection will be gone. And so at the end of the six weeks, they do another blood test on me and the infection levels in my blood have not shifted at all. So all of a sudden what I read on the internet takes on a whole new meaning. And I go... The, the doctors go get me to do another fine needle biopsy. And again, the results came back exactly the same. Nothing actually grew. So they couldn't identify what the infection was to actually treat it. And so I got to the point for the doctors that they said to me, Mark, there's nothing more that we can do for you. You have to go home and hope for the best. Oh, my God. How are you feeling at this stage? That was devastating because I was brought up in a family with a very strong belief in the medical industry. And, you know, I knew that the doctors were going to help, help me. I knew that the doctors would fix it. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden you're getting this news that the doctors can't do anything. It just, it was really devastating. It was, it was incredible, especially at that stage in my life. I mean, you know, I was, you know, I just had a, a child. My daughter was two years old. So, you know, it was, it was really scary times. And so, you know, the worst part was the doctor saying they couldn't help me. And then the neurosurgeon says to me, Mark, you need to understand your situation. If you pick up a shopping bag, it will collapse your spine. Oh, my God. So I'm a person who, you know, has been in the construction industry, who, you know, played rugby league, which is a, a contact sport all my life. And all of a sudden I can't pick up a shopping bag. So it was really, it was really scary. So what happened was I went to see my naturopath. My naturopath gives me some vitamins, but she also gives me this book. And she says, this is a course I did a few years earlier. There may be something in it for you. And it was, seriously, it was, it was one of, it, it was not a very well-produced book. <laughs> let's just say that it was basically on a4 paper it was stapled on the ends and it just had like this little oval with this this woman's face and it said go up and work with god by vienna steibel and so i took this book home and i started reading it and once i started reading it i got that feeling and whatever this is this is it I just knew that this was going to be the answer for me. Yeah. And so I jumped online. I looked up Vianna's website. I didn't find any link to anybody in Australia. But I did find her Yahoo group. <laughs> and it just shows you <laughs> how long ago it was. So it was actually 18 years ago. I've been teaching for 17 years, but it was 18 years ago that, uh, that I found her website. So I joined her Yahoo, Yahoo, sorry, Yahoo group. And the next morning I receive all these emails and there's one from somebody in Australia. So I ring them up. So Sunday night I got the book. I looked up Vianna's website. Monday I received the emails. I called that person. They didn't ring me back until Tuesday. Were you, were you inquiring about getting a theta healing yourself or did you, were you looking for clarification and some questions? What was, what were they responding to? No, no. I, look, I, I just knew that this was going to be the answer for me. So I was just Need bringing up to, to get the process started. Yeah, Whatever yeah. Whatever the process was. I, you know, I didn't even know what the process yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just like, I, I need some of this. This is the answer. Yeah, yeah. And so I spoke to them. And what we did was we booked a consultation for the Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I took the first class. And then the following weekend, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I was taking the, the first two classes a week and apart, a, yeah, a week apart. 
and I was also doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation. <laughs> so, so I sit down for this consultation on a Thursday, and, and mind you, I'm in constant pain. I would actually have about an hour's sleep at night with a heat pack in between my shoulder blades. Otherwise, I was just constantly in pain. Right. And, you know, the doc doctors put me back on that same antibiotic that didn't work. And they said to me, we're going to give you another really high dosage antibiotic and you just hope for the best. And, you know, once you're on antibiotics for a while, once you're taking painkillers for a while, the painkillers start to eat away at the lining of your stomach. So you need to take something to counteract that side effect. And then there's, you know, all these other medications. Probiotics and everything you need yeah. to breathe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was on, Jeez. you know, like this whole pharmacy of, 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 you know, medications. And I sit down for this first healing session. And this guy says he's going to do a healing on me. And, and we identify that there's some resentment. And so we work on resentment towards my father. Now, if somebody had told me before that day I was resenting my father, I would have laughed at them. Mm -hmm. My father was a wonderful man. He just died when I was 16. But the really interesting thing was once we dealt with that resentment towards my father, half the pain in my back disappeared. It was really profound. And I remember going home that evening. I would have gotten home at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. My wife comes up to me and says, Mark, how did you go? What was it? I said, listen, I just need to rest for a bit. Yeah. I didn't wake up until the next morning. My body was just that exhausted. And because that pain was released, I was able to rest. And I had that really long sleep. And then I went the next morning to that class. I want to interrupt you, Mark, just for a second, not to interrupt your flow, but just for our listener at home. So um, I just want to explain for them and if, feel free to interject, of course, but, you know, essentially you go, you have a consultation with what I would assume would be a theta practitioner. One of the things that theta healers do, theta practitioners do is they sort of interview you a little bit. And what they do is they identify, you know, and feel free to interrupt Mark, because you're the expert here. I just have yeah. done some theta healing, but, and so, you know, they kind of interview you to find out you know, how you think about life, you know, what are these, you know, challenges that you have, maybe beliefs about yourself. And then they kind of go and they, it's called digging. <laughs> and they basically <laughs> dig later like little detectives and they get in there and they dig and then they dig and then they dig until they sort of get down to what's called a root, a root belief. Um, and then they, I, and so for you, you know, I'm assuming that that was what happened with you, right? That they were going through and finding all these things. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that there was a, a correlation for your father only because our listener is probably a little bit unsure about how they they would find that out yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah so you, you're exactly right so what it is it's about identifying what the 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 ident well the presenting issue is so you know if you've got a sore shoulder or you've got you know like you know anger issues happening that's your presenting issue and right. the presenting issue is just a starting point so you can identify what's really creating it. And that's the digging process where we actually get down to the bottom. And it's like a house of cards. If you just take things off the top, you can rebuild it easily. But when you get to the bottom, to the root cause, the whole thing collapses. And, and that's the key with theta healing is identifying mm -hmm. those belief systems that are actually creating that mm -hmm. issue in your life. And, and the other thing that's important to understand with theta healing as well is everything serves us there is a benefit to everything that we've created in our lives and and i and i will explain how you know my situation with the chiropractor and all the rest of it was a perfect manifestation and there yeah. were benefits to that like you yeah. know you know even you know like a, a ridiculous experience like that on some level does have benefits for us and it's important to identify those Mm -hmm. So in the story, you had just had this healing, you'd had, a, you'd actually slept. And, you know, from what you were talking about earlier, it feels to me like sleep may have been foreign or difficult for you around that stage. So that's kind of an amazing thing. And then yeah, the next absolutely. day you went to this, the workshop or the, or the yeah. course where you were also learning more about theta healing, correct? Yeah. So I was learning how to do the technique for myself. Right. So in the theta healing class, you learn how to like start with the presenting issue and then how to go through that digging process to get down to the bottom belief systems and also how to change those belief systems and 
also how to teach the feelings around those beliefs so you can actually so so basically when we're changing a belief we're, we're changing a neural uh the, the neural pathway in our brain yeah yeah right so all we're doing is basically reprogramming the brain because you know in in let's say a particular situation so let's say johnny's at school he's five years old he teacher walks in says johnny you're too slow johnny thinks i'm dumb i'm stupid so now Johnny's taken on this misperception that he's dumb and he's stupid. And 20 years later, Johnny's at work. His boss walks in, has a look at what he's doing and says, Johnny, you're too slow. So Johnny's subconscious mind scans through the filing cabinet, finds the file that says too slow. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. So now Johnny reacts, does something that he's going to regret. And all of a sudden, he's got himself into a negative experience. But what's happened is he's reacted based on the misperception of a five-year-old. So when we change the belief system, what we're actually doing is changing that misperception. So now we remove that belief system or basically switch off that neural pathway. So Johnny's boss walks into the room, says, Johnny, you're too slow. His subconscious mind scans the filing cabinet. There is no file. And now his conscious mind can respond. And he turns to his boss and says, I took a longer lunch today. I'll work back this afternoon. So when you're talking earlier about how Johnny like goes back through his brain and, and uh, sees that file to kind of reinforce that belief, you're basically saying that, that he like kind of looks back and he finds a truth there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. But after a theta healing, he goes back there and there's no truth. So he goes, wait a minute. And he almost has discernment and he goes, no, that doesn't really make sense for me, but this is what I did. I took a longer lunch. Yeah. Right. So, so basically how it works is you have your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind stores all your belief systems, right? So the, the subconscious mind is like the supercomputer part of our minds. And then we have the conscious mind, which is much slower, but it's the logical and rational part of our mind. Mm -hmm. The subconscious mind is basically in control of our lives up to 95% of the time. So that's why we find ourselves reacting in a lot of situations. And then afterwards we think, you know, I don't know why I reacted that way. And, and the reason for that is you have a subconscious belief system. And once the subconscious identifies that belief then it takes it takes charge so you react to that situation or however that subconscious has stored that memory then that's going to determine how you deal with that situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the other hand if there is no file there then our logical and rational mind can take over and we can make a conscious choice in that moment of how we deal with that situation mm -hmm. I want to ask you in a few minutes a little bit about the inner child. And I know that with Theta Healing, it's also sometimes we're carrying beliefs from past lives and then sense ancestral lineage and stuff. But before we get into that, because I there's so many things to discuss here, I would really love for you to finish your story about your your journey. Yeah. So you go to this class and you've you've had a good night's sleep. You must be already feeling like what's something's working here. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And look, at the end of that weekend, my wife and my daughter came to pick me up from that class. And my daughter comes running up to me. She's two years old. She's like, Daddy, Daddy, carry me. While well, wife is freaking out, like, no, he can't. Yeah. But I knew I was better. And I picked up my daughter and I let me look back from that day. Oh, my God. So good. So you know your body. You know when there's pain there. You know when something doesn't feel right. Yeah. And I knew I was completely healed. And it was just an incredible transformation. Yeah. There's so many things to discuss about this. And I know that, you know, with Vienna's story, um, I believe it was bone cancer or something that she had, right? Yeah. She healed herself from. Yeah. So, you know, there's just so many questions that I, I really want to go into with you. One thing that I will say is that I had a theta healing a couple of years ago by um, Veronica McClintic up in Darwin. And she's one of my dear friends. Yeah. And yeah, um, she's lovely. Yeah. And I had a lot of fear around um, talking to past over souls and, you know, yeah. a lot of fear around. And I knew there was something I was supposed to do, I think just on a subconscious level. Anyway, to cut along, so sure, I got a healing from her 
And then it, and it worked, you know, it worked and clearly I was ready. And then a year later, I, uh, or a year and a half later or so I've started doing mediumship now because I know that's really where I'm, I know that's my sole purpose is to do that. But I always had this like fear around it. And I guess my question to you is a lot about, you know, some people listening to this are like, I'm just trying to think about the best way to articulate it. So Mark, do you believe that we come you know, and we incarnate as humans and we have these soul paths and these soul journeys that we're supposed to be on. And do you think that some people are, uh, there's just thousand things I want to say to you at one time. So that's why I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating. So <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of believe, I kind of believe that we're, that we're given out exits in our life. Now, some people have said, maybe we're given two exits or something in our life, but I guess I'm kind of wondering why is it that some people can get these healings, you know, in your case and it work and other people not get it is because on some level, they, they actually are ready to pass. They're ready to go. You know, does, does theta healing work for someone if they really want to do it? And then, and I know that, you know, in Vianna's book, she talks a bit about this, but you know, what about people who really want to heal, but then they can't like, it's just such a, yeah. Just any thoughts on, on all that, that's, I know that's a big that's a big subject, big questions. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Look, we might have to do like two, two or three parts. I think series I know, <laughs> it, I know, it's it's true. We, we will, and but, you know, and if you're up for it, I'm I'm here for it too. And the thing yeah. is that it's such a big subject, and I yeah. feel that we have so much fear around um, disease, and um, you know, when people are given these diagnoses, you know, there's a lot of trust in the medical system. There's a lot of kind of well, why would you ever do a, a natural alternative when we've got all these other options? It's just such a big, a big thing. Yeah. So any thoughts yeah. on, on all uh, of that? Look, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, and, and look, you know, the world according to Mark, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why, um, you know, you're here speaking your truth. That's what it's about. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the way I see it is we have free will. So we come down so Vianna explains like our existence as seven planes of existence, right? Yeah. So the first plane is the rocks and the minerals. The second plane is the plants. The third plane is the physical plane that we live on here. Um, the fourth plane is the ancestor realm. So when we die, we cross over, we go into the spirit realm. That's the fourth plane. The fifth plane is the ultimate plane of duality. It's where the angels are. It's where heaven and hell are. The top of the fifth plane is where the ascended masters are, like Jesus, Buddha, Kuan Yin, etc. Then you have the sixth plane of existence, which is the laws of the universe. And then we have the seventh plane, which is the all that is energy. But the all that is energy, the seventh plane, makes up all the other planes of existence as well. So when quantum physics talks about everything being one energy, from a theta right. healing perspective, it's the seventh plane energy, which is that one energy of, of creation. It's like the create, it's basically like creator or God is one entity. And then all of these sort of almost, if we imagine that creators like a tree, then all of these roots would you say could be everything else in existence almost or yeah absolutely absolutely so if we're the leaf on the tree yeah the our higher self would be the branch and you know our soul is that connection with the tree the earth the sky everything else and that's Mm -hmm. that oneness yeah so if there are planes of existence so basically what happens is we're on this third plane of existence which is the plane that we come to learn our lessons and virtues. So what happens is we we come down from the fourth plane onto the third plane where we have the physical experience. And we have our lessons and virtues that we're here to learn. And once we've done that a few times, we become an awakened master. An awakened master then graduates to the fifth plane of existence. And so if you look at like all spiritual teachings, like, you know, the ultimate objective is that enlightenment. Yeah, And that's when we reach the top of the fifth plane of existence, which is where the ascended masters are. So all of us has that ultimate purpose of becoming enlightened. And so what happens is we come back down here on that third plane, we've got our lessons and virtues, and that helps us to graduate 
through the different degrees that are on the fifth plane of existence. How do you define enlightenment? Does that mean? So enlightenment oh, is. Oh, you know, like where you just like, the, fairies are singing, <laughs> yeah. the angels are singing for you or. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. So enlightenment is basically mastering the physical body. See, as a soul, as a spirit, each of us has mastered the spirit body. And we all come here onto this physical plane to master the, master the physical body. Oh so being God. able to move objects with your mind, being in alignment with, with all of the planes of existence. So being able to communicate with spirits, being able to talk to angels, being able to, you know, work with the elements, the weather, etc., being able to work with the laws of the universe. So it's about being able to rise above this consciousness of this plane of existence and, and you know, being in that oneness energy. So, you know, like if you look at Christianity, for example, you know, like, you know, Jesus said, everything that, that I can do, you can do as well through the Father. And, and it's basically that same consciousness. When we raise our consciousness to that point of being beyond like all the, I guess, all the stresses, all the physicality of this life, mm -hmm. when we raise our consciousness above it, then you're getting to that point of enlightenment. And so for me, um, you know, a really good way to put it is, you know, when I first started this work 18 years ago, and, and you know, look, my, my spiritual journey started when I was 21, right, which is more way, than... Way yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far back, but still pretty far back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's okay, but, me but, too. <laughs> but, but the thing is, 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 you know, if I got upset back in those days, I'd probably be upset for like a week or three or four days. Today, if I was to get upset, I find that I recognize that I'm upset in a couple of minutes and then I'm able to change that really quickly. And that's what enlightenment's really about. It's about not being caught up in the dramas and the little things that take place throughout our lives that we turn into massive problems. And, and it's about being present. That's what enlightenment's really about. It's about really being present in each moment, yeah. having gratitude for each moment, loving each moment, and recognizing that everybody that comes into your life is a gift. And one of my favorite sayings is, is no person is your friend. No person is your enemy. Every person is your teacher. And, and yeah. I really believe that because if we're in that mindset of being present in every moment, then we're going to share incredible experiences with people. Every action that I'm going to take is bettering their life. And every interaction that another person is happening with, having with me is going to be bettering my life. And mm -hmm. so we're all gifts to each other. Yeah. And if we're able to be in that mindset, then we're going to create that utopia here, like heaven on earth. Right. And a big part about that is because we're not playing a victim. So it's sort of like, you know, somebody's triggering you. And if you can be present or be, and I want to know whether or not in, in a second, whether or not you think being present in the observer is the same thing. Um, so let's say you're aware of somebody's triggering you and you can go, well, what are they triggering me? Oh, they're showing me a part about myself that I still maybe resent or I, I judge and, and I really need to learn to accept. So there's that. There's also the physical things that are presenting themselves that are giving us gifts to say, hey, there's these unresolved things that you need to work through. Uh, yeah. and, and I love, I love it. I'm sure you've heard this before, but how about how life is working for us, not against us? Yeah, and, absolutely. And I think that, you know, when I, when I think about that, you know, when I do mediumship, it's probably very similar for the work that you do. It's almost like two brains and one brain where you're receiving everything. You're just, everything is working. It's just on fire. You know, it's just like, you're the channel, boom, boom, boom. And then there's the other, the other voice that's like, wait a minute, I'm going to tell a story here. I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> I just, just be quiet, please. You know, for a while. And that, and that, that ego, I guess, self of ourselves is always wanting to be superior, be inferior, tell a story, you know, and, and really almost brings us down, sucks us down into this sort of ground level where you're talking about 
you know, when we can kind of step up from that and not, not play that part. So is presence and being the observer for you the same thing? And on that note, you know, how important is, is grounding as well? Because one of the thing, one of the challenges that I have, and, and everyone hears me telling about this on the show all the time, I know they're annoyed, but I talk about Eckhart Tolle's work all the time because it changed my life and, yeah. you know, being in the, in the moment. But one of the things I realize is that I'm very often, I can be trapped in my head. So I know that if I'm not being working on being grounded, that it's harder for me to be present and the observer. Any thoughts on that, Mark? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> one of the really important, one of the really important classes that we actually teach in Theta Healing is called uh, You and the Creator. And that actually goes through and explains like the different aspects of yourself. So, so with Theta Healing, we believe that our belief systems are stored on four levels. So the first level is your core level, which is everything that you're taking from conception through till now. Okay. The second level is the gene level, and that's all the ancestral stuff. And that goes back seven generations. And then you have the history level, which is past lives and also group consciousness. And then the fourth level is the soul level. And so for each of those four levels, there, there are different aspects of ourselves. So the first aspect of ourselves is the survival self. And your survival self is always out there trying to fix a problem. Right? Or... It's, it's, it's all about survival. It's about keeping you safe. Yeah. And my survival oh. self goes, there's no problem here. There must be some, there must be a problem somewhere. Let's try to look at all the non-drama and see if there's an issue. I don't, that's what mine yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. Annoying. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the survival self is on like, you know, the, the core level, the gene level, and also the past life level. So there could be things that it's keeping you safe from the, uh, from 20 generations ago that would make sense actually yeah yeah and and then you have your undercurrent self and the undercurrent is the one that's always trying to fix the problem right so the undercurrent is the one that will use revenge or you know even resentment to try and fix something right so somebody has hurt us in the past it's trying to get back at them it's trying to fix that problem mm. right? and then you have your ego self and the ego self, you know, is usually, you know, trading fame and money at the expense of somebody else. No. And ego is not a bad thing. It's only when it becomes egotism. And, you know, like in the, there are a lot of conventional industries out there that you can get away with egotism. But the healing industries is an industry that, you know, once you get into egotism, people see through you and, you know, you're really creating, you know, a negative experience for yourself because people are spiritual. They see that. Yeah. Okay. That's true. But the other thing too, that I want to interject here, and I, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it is, and we haven't really even gone into how Theta Healing works yet, but yeah. a big part about Theta Healing is that you are not the healer. You are witnessing the healing. And that, would you agree? That's why a big part about egotism can't fit with healing because you're Absolutely. not, you know, the savior of the world. You're, you are the, the facilitator. You are the observer. You are watching the healing happen. And for our listener, we'll explain that in a little bit as well, in case you're a bit confused. But yeah, yeah. is that right, yeah, Mark? Absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot yeah. on. And that's, you know, yeah. that's what keeps you grounded. That's what keeps you balanced because you are not the healer. You are just witnessing the creator doing the healing. And yeah. look, you know, I've, I've been blessed. I've worked with, you know, thousands of people. And I've seen a lot of people have incredible healings, right, miraculous healings. But I didn't do any of that. I just watched the creator healer. And, and more, moreover, it comes back to the person. If that person is ready to heal, the healing is going to take place. Right. 18 years ago when I was half dead, you know, I, I got to that point where, you know, it didn't matter who was sitting in front of me. I knew I was going to heal. I wasn't going to that healing, hoping it was going to happen. I knew. And that, and that brings us back to like an important question he asked earlier 
about like you know that spirit why is it that some people heal and some people don't yeah one of the biggest things that stops us back is well holds us back as humans is that fear of death or the fear of the unknown so if your spirit has come down here with a purpose and every single one of us has a spirit and our purpose is to fulfill something that our spirit has identified that is important for us. So if your spirit wants to stay and the physical body wants to go, what can the physical do to force the spirit? Nothing. If the spirit wants to go and the and the physical wants to stay, then what can the physical do to force the spirit? Nothing. So this whole fear of death that people have is actually just a waste of energy. And the fear of death actually stops people from living their lives because, you know, if you've got a greater purpose here on this planet, then you're going to be here and you're going to achieve it. And the way I look at it, like 18 years ago, I had like that death door. I had that opportunity to go home. I was half dead. Yeah. And... It was really simple. And it basically came down to the point where I was like, you know what, are you choosing to stay or are you choosing to go? And what Vianna says is when you achieve around 70% of your life purpose, then usually you'll have like the opportunity to go home. But see what happens at that point is you can actually reset the purpose. Oh, like you create can choose a new to one continue or it, it and you can expand it. And that's what happens for a lot of people is they get to that point and it's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to choose to go home this time. Or, yes, I'm going to choose to stay and I'm going to expand that purpose. I'm going to take it to that next level. Yeah. It actually makes me feel emotional listening to you because I understand it. And and I think I also, it's it's like I totally get it, but then my human mind has a hard time with it and I know that's ego because ego is afraid of death right ego is afraid but when you're talking you know we're souls experiencing the human existence there is in fact no death so it's not it's just a resetting or going back and you know and then coming back so maybe that's you know when we're humans we look at it the end of the world but it's not actually it's just you're moving into the next sort of phase when you were talking about you know being at at death's door and then So do you feel your soul knew that it was supposed to stay here and keep on working or, and so you can't, can you change your soul's plan? You know, you were talking about if the soul's ready to go, but the body's not, can you change the soul being ready to go? I mean, and then we bring in quantum physics in a way, but maybe that's just material and that's just the body stuff or is quantum physics so many things mark sorry oh, yeah, absolutely absolutely <laughs> and, and look you know um ne- next time we do this i'll actually have a whiteboard behind me so i can draw things out for you like that will make it okay cool a, yeah. a lot easier than um but but yeah so so the thing is if the soul is ready to leave if you've come here and you've achieved everything that you needed to so let's say you have your les- list of lessons of virtues yeah and you've ticked off all those lessons and virtues and your soul is content with everything that it's learned in this existence, then it's ready to go home. So it doesn't matter what you do, it's not going to change. Right? But if, on the other hand, if the soul wants to stay and, you know, we're fed up with our life and we just want to leave, then we can't force that either. So all it is, is is we're just going to be frustrated until we get on page or in alignment with our soul because the soul is going to stay here regardless. Okay. Do you believe that we, um, you know, have our, our soul's plan and that we continue to adapt it as we're here on earth? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Right. So that, and and look, you know, like I think, you know, we've come down here with an objective of, with a, with a purpose yeah. But when we come down here and we start achieving that, then we could always expand that too. 
Yeah. We have many purposes. So if, if we just really briefly look at quantum physics, right? Yeah. Everything exists at once. So time is an illusion. Yeah. The past, the present, and the future are all happening at the same time for your soul. <laughs> so yeah. every possibility, every conceivable possibility for your life already exists. You mean every possible outcome and resolution for anything ever created absolutely yeah i remember i had that i won't talk to you about how i got there but i i had that realization once when i was in my late teens early 20s yeah. and i went oh it was amazing it was just like oh wait a minute i think it was around the time i watched what the bleep do we know actually and that blew my oh, mind cool. and i went oh my god there is infinite possibility for everything all happening right now absolutely just... absolutely and and it's being proven scientifically like the many worlds theory of quantum physics you know it, it the world splits into different realities and we choose the one that we're experiencing and we're awake here but we're asleep to all the other ones so there is a version of yourself that already has all your desires that is already experiencing everything that you could ever desire it's already having it and it's, wow. it's just, it's shifting our consciousness. So, right. um, you know, if you look at an instant healing, for example, so 18 years ago, I was half dead. I had this infection in my vertebrae. You know, the doctors didn't even believe that the, the bones would be able to completely heal. So what happened was I was at this level of consciousness. And when I raised my consciousness to a higher level, the physical condition that was i was experiencing no longer existed at that higher level of consciousness ah. so what did it do it had to kind of evolve to catch up so i shifted my mental consciousness yeah right and then the physical experience shifted itself so at level a so if we're on a bar chart yeah. And level A is like 50%. At that point, vertebral osteomyelitis existed. So it was resonating at the same level of vibration. Because yeah. we are energy. We are energy ultimately, right? Yeah. And so let's say I shifted my consciousness to 70% on that bar chart. So I raised my consciousness, right? My thinking, my mindset. Yeah. And what happened was the vertebral osteomyelitis does not exist at that higher level. Oh, right. Because it's a lower vibration. That's right. Right, right. But it was so a when catalyst you shift to that for higher vibration. to do that also. So that there's the gift. Yeah. yeah. So okay. when you shift to that higher vibration, that instantly takes place. Right. Okay. That's cool. I remember I was talking to a friend a while ago who's a medium also. And she was saying that, you know, she's not really worried about lower frequencies because she has such a high frequency they can't see her it's almost the same sort of yeah. concept isn't it oh uh, absolutely yeah, absolutely where you go these things that can have that can affect people at at vibe at frequency level one you know aren't affecting yeah. people at frequency level five but people That's at right. frequency and i'm just using those numbers you know for yeah. lack of a better example but people at frequency level five can they experience things that someone at level seven couldn't experience, for example. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's what happens. The more we shift our consciousness, the more we raise our consciousness, um, we experience different things and, and you'll experience those things instantly. When you shift your consciousness to that higher level. So a good way of, of explaining it and is if you have, you know, there, there's times in your life where you don't feel good about yourself. Yeah. And your finances drop to that level. And then there's times where you're feeling really good about yourself and your finances rise to that level. Yeah. The shift takes place in you first. Right. And then when the you world around you, you shows up as how you're, because right. it's a, it's a reflection of what's going on inside. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. So I've actually created a, a class and it's been approved as a theta healing elective. It's called wealth consciousness. And and a lot Whoa. of what we're talking about now is like that whole quantum physics side of things. Yeah. Goes into that wealth consciousness aspect where 
when when you like all the wealth that you've ever desired lies within you and not outside of you. When you shift your consciousness, when you shift your awareness, the external circumstances change to meet the level of vibration that you're at. They rise up to meet you where you are, basically. Absolutely. Does, does the heart have anything to do with that? I mean, because I I took I've only taken my level one theta healing, so I'm aware of you know some of the things that you're talking about. Um, but I feel that lately I realized that the heart is a big opportunity to up level and, and put yourself in that consciousness. Do you think so as well? Or do you put any emphasis on, on the heart or is, is because theta healing is its own sort of thing? Is, is yeah. That, yeah. Look, look, the heart plays a big part in it because a lot of our worthiness comes from the heart. So from an energetic perspective the heart is all about giving and receiving love yeah right but it's also where we actually store like current sorrow yeah so so a lot of sorrow is actually stored in the heart but it's mainly about giving and receiving love and if you're able to give and receive love then your worthiness is going to be very strong right if your worthiness is high then you're going to allow more abundance into your life and one of the key things that actually blocks people when it comes to having more abundance in their lives, and, and abundance is not just money. Abundance is having success in all areas of your life. Yeah. Right. But one of the key things that blocks people is receiving. And, yeah. you know, especially for a lot of healers, like, you know, because we are empathic beings, because we pick up the, on the energies from other people. So a person is giving you this, but energetically, it's like, I give you this, you're going to owe me for the next 30 lifetimes. Wow. And so all of a sudden, like, you know, we're, we're backing away from like that receiving. And, and what happens is if you, if you have a visitor who comes to your house and you offer them a drink and they say no, and then you offer them another drink and they say no, and then they offer them another drink and they say no again, you're going to stop offering. And so when we're constantly telling the universe, well, hang on, I don't want to receive that. I'd rather give. Then the universe st stops offering oh, things to you. Oh, that's so good. And as you're talking, you're right. It's all about, it's so much easier to give than receive. And you're right. I never, it is about the worthiness of being, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the greater your self-worth, the more abundance you're going to experience. So, you know, from a money experience, uh, from a money perspective, yeah. you know, a person who has a lot of money has a greater self-value in the area of money. Yeah. You know, so they, they ha ha value themselves much higher than a poor person when it comes to money. Doesn't mean they've got more self-worth than the poor person. It just means in that aspect of value, when it comes to money, they value themselves a lot higher. Right. And and that's what we look at. If we look at it, the different areas of our lives, the more we value ourselves, the more abundance we're going to experience. And so from that heart perspective, if you're giving an equal, giving and receiving an equal measure, then you're in that flow with the universe. You're in that giving and receiving. It's that natural flow. So you're going to experience abundance. Your worthiness is going to be high. You're going to feel really good about yourself and amazing things will happen for you. Mm. So do you think that sometimes people are running these programs from the, you know, the core, uh, from the ancestral, um, you know, uh, levels from the core level, the ancestral level, the past life level, and the, you know, the collective consciousness level? Are we, you know, are a lot of people having these programs that are stopping them from that? And, and do you have to do a theta healing in order to kind of overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, that we have belief systems on all the, the, the four different levels. And, you know, those, those belief systems are like your unconscious rules. So they govern what you experience in the different areas of your life. Right. So, you know, if, if for example, a child grows up in an environment where their, their parent hits them and they tell them you know this hurt this is you know i'm doing this because i love you so what happens is that child associates love and pain so all of a sudden they get into a relationship and a person says i love you and that person's like get that love away from me because the pain's coming 
Oh. And, and, and so that subconscious belief system is going to determine what they allow themselves to experience. And so whatever you're experiencing in your life at the moment on some level is a perfect manifestation because everything serves us. So, you know, if, if we look at my story, right, like really quickly, yeah, you know, how do I manifest that, right? That's a perfect manifestation. How? So it was coming up to my 32nd birthday. And I remember saying to myself, you know, this is the year that I'm going to be without my father longer than I was with him yeah. because my father died when I was 16. It was, it, was a, it was about two days after my dad's birthday that I went to see the chiropractor, right? He broke two ribs and a vertebrae. So broken bones are about connection to God. So when I was 21, I met this girl who was into spirituality. I thought she was a weirdo because I was brought up in a very Catholic family. And what had happened was I took on this perception that either I was Catholic or I was spiritual. It was one or the other. I created this separation in my mind. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, um, just to clarify with that story the the lady that uh that was a widow is actually my wife we st we have two beautiful children so we have a bit of a joke today i don't know who the bigger widow is <laughs> that's so i love that story that's awesome yeah but the thing was is the the issues that took place for me were all in my back the back is all about support right yeah because I lost my father at a young age, even though I had a lot of support in my life, I convinced myself I was unsupported because I didn't have my dad's support there. Right. And then when I was in hospital, there was a guy that got his results and he was freaking out and he was swearing at the doctors and he wanted to leave the hospital because if he got a pacemaker put into his heart, he no longer could drive a bus, which is what he did as a profession here in Australia. And he was freaking out. And I remember at the time sitting there thinking, God, if there is something that can help people, show me what it is. I was half dead. But in that moment, I forgot about, com completely Yourself. forgot about being half dead. And it was just about like, you know, God, if there's something out there that can give people hope or help people, show me what it is. And then I went back to being half dead and I forgot all about that. And then all of a sudden I find Theta Healing and I'm giving people hope. I'm showing people how to help themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that was all part of like that bigger picture. It was like part of my purpose. In that moment, I took on that next stage of my purpose and that allowed me to heal. And so as soon as I realized that there was a bigger picture for me here, my body shifted completely. And, and that's what it was. I shifted my mind to a higher level. The body changed itself because that health condition didn't exist at this new level. Yes. Okay. But you also, it's as though you had that awareness about being of service. Unconsciously. I was, I, I remember. Yeah. I, I remembered that experience like a couple of years later. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So once that. I'd gotten into theta healing, because I was, I, I had my healing, and all of a sudden, like you know, family were coming to me for healings. They saw me half dead, and then I was completely healed. They were like, "Whatever you've got, can we have some?" Yeah. And, and so, so I was just doing it because I was excited to be alive. I had no intention of becoming a healer. I remember doing the instructor's training with Viana, and she said eighty percent of you will go on and teach this work. And I remember thinking, thank God I'm in the 20%. <laughs> but yeah. I always thought that I'd go back into engineering or back into construction. Yeah. And it, and it took about six months for me to realize that this is what I'm meant to be doing. And once I committed to it, it was like, you know, like the red carpet just rolled out for me. It was just what I was meant to be doing. And it was really profound. But, but one really important thing that I just want to, explain about my um i guess my journey is it was a perfect manifestation because before i got sick i was manifesting that i would take a year off to do absolutely nothing 
<laughs> and I got my manifestation. <laughs> I got my manifestation, but there was two really important details that I left out. One was the financial independence. Yeah. And two was the health to enjoy the year off doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. You have to be specific. That's whenever I ask for anything, I'm like, gracefully and with joy and humor, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's so funny. And actually, I mean, I got made redundant a couple of years ago during when COVID first kicked off. And um, it's funny because you know, as devastating as that was, I also knew on a certain level that I had to be set free or I never would follow the path I was meant to be on. I just could have, I would have been sort of stuck in that perpetuating cycle, you know, working for someone else. Yeah. yeah so I really needed that to happen to kind of kickstart my journey to, to where I am now. And I guess those are, those are the examples, you know, that when we have these difficult things that happen, that when we can turn them around and use them as an opportunity, then yeah, we absolutely. can see why they're there, why we manifest to them. I mean, it's a difficult one because not everyone wants to take responsibility for the things in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, that is a really huge thing. And and one, one really important thing that I've learned over the years is the Taoists have a particular saying. It was like, there was this farmer whose horse ran away. And his neighbor comes over and says, oh, you know, I'm sorry so that such a bad thing happened for you. And the farmer says, don't be, because who knows what is good or bad. The next day, the horse came back with a herd of horses that it be had befriended. And so the neighbor comes over to the farmer and says, oh, congratulations on your good fortune. And the farmer says, don't, because who knows what is good or bad. The next day, the farmer's son was trying to break in one of these horses, fell and broke his leg. The neighbor comes over and says, oh, I'm so sorry for your misfortune. The farmer says, don't be for who knows what is good or bad. And then the next day, the army was coming to forcefully recruit soldiers. And the farmer's son was exempted because of his broken leg. And that's the thing, because at the time, we may look at it as a really negative experience or a really positive experience. But it's not until down that track a little bit that we see the bigger picture. Yeah. And that's what is important to understand is our soul knows the bigger picture. And so sometimes on like that conscious level, we're chucking a tantrum and we're freaking out because it's like, this isn't working the way I, it should be. But if you look at the divine plan, it's all about making those changes to allow you to step into that true purpose. That's so freaking beautiful. I love that so much. Uh, you know, Mark, we're at the end of our time. I mean, it's been over an hour, which I'm sure blows your mind as much as it does mine, but you've already agreed and I'm holding you to it to come back for a part two. So I'm really feeling, you know, in part two that we could talk a bit about inner child because I'm really interested in that in, in terms yeah. of theta healing. We could talk a bit about the actual he uh, theta healing process. I thought we could talk about, you know, is it painful and, um, you know, anything else that, that comes up, obviously I had about 10 questions written down. I don't even think we scratched two. So it's just <laughs> yeah. what sort of happens. Uh, is there anything? Uh, if you let me start talking, Lauren, I'll keep yeah, going. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, no, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's so, I mean, and maybe we can add even more quantum physics and stuff like that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's such a huge subject. And I know that when I have these guests on, you know, like yourself, that, scratching the surface is all we can do in a lot of cases but this is yeah. such a fascinating fascinating practice and subject and I personally have benefited from it very much and as they listen to you talk I'm like okay I gotta get my uh Vianist books out they're just over there <laughs> and have a look at some things you know and yeah. yeah I just think you know kind of like you talked about there's this opportunity for people to look at things in a different way and, and assume responsibility on another, to take themselves up those levels, you know, which I think is really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And look, look, that's one of the really key things. So I, I guess probably a key thing to understand about theta healing is what we're actually doing is removing your emotional attachment to your past, right? Everything that happens to you has happened for a reason. Now, a lot of people have experienced really horrendous things and horrific things. You didn't ask for those things to take place. But in each of those experiences, there is some sort of lesson or experience 
or virtue, sorry, lesson or virtue that you needed to learn from it. Mm. Right. And that's the key. So what happens is as long as we think back to our past and it makes us feel sad or it makes us feel angry, then what we're doing is we're actually being victimized by our past. It's like a boat anchor. It stops us from moving forward. Right. So when you're able to look at the past and you're able to remove the emotional attachment to it, then all of a sudden it allows you to move forward. And that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to create the life that we desire. And it's possible for every single one of us. But the key is about removing that emotional attachment. And that's what theta healing is really profound at, is helping you get in there, identify what's really there, what the cause of it is, removing that emotional attachment, and then you can move forward. So when I got sick, one of my motivations to get better was to go back and break the chiropractor's bones. But yeah. once I did all the healings on myself, I think about that chiropractor now, it wasn't good, it wasn't bad. It was just what I needed to experience at that particular time in order to allow me to move forward in my life the way I have. At the time, it was a major stress. I, I didn't understand it. I felt victimized by it. Yeah. But now when I look back at it, it's one of the most profound experiences in my life because it was a real turning point. And had I not dealt with the issues, I never would have been able to see that. And that's the key thing to understand. As long as we're feeling victimized by our past, we block ourselves from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's the key in your life today is about moving forward and becoming the best version of yourself. Yeah. And that's where I think theta healing is really profound, where it actually helps you to do that. That's so beautiful. And yeah, that's what we're here to do. You know, we're here to live a purpose. We're here to whatever the purpose is for some people. It might be to inspire, it might be to help heal other people or, you know, witness the creator, but you know what I mean? Help heal yeah. people. Um, yeah. And so it's about, it's about getting on with the job and not allowing our stories and our small selves to really, you know, kind of tarnish what we can do here. Thank you yeah, so absolutely. much, Mark, for being here. Um, you know, how can people get in touch with you? I'll put a link to everything in the show notes, of course, anything else you wanted to say, and we'll definitely yeah. bring you back on the show so we can continue this conversation. Cause I feel like our listener is home at home is being left hanging right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and look, it was a pleasure being on the show with you. I really appreciate it. And, you know, if anybody would like to get in touch, it's, it's, um, thetahealing.net.au is my website. You'll be able to find all the upcoming classes. We do have a basic theta healing class coming up from the 28th to the 30th of April. That's our next one. So, but there's plenty of materials. I've also got a YouTube channel where you get like really amazing videos and yes, you receive healings in those videos as well. So that's really profound. That can help people too. Brilliant. Thank you. One thing I will say to the listener at home as well is that theta healing isn't painful just in case you're <laughs> curious, because they might be wondering about that. It's actually pretty magical, isn't it, Mark? You feel sort of like, um, like all this energy is bubbling up inside your body and it's just trying to find its way out. And then it does. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So like there's no physical touch associated no. with theta healing. It's just recognizing what belief systems are there. And when we go through the digging process, it's not about reliving any of the trauma. Yeah. It's about getting below the trauma and identifying why we've unconsciously caused that trauma to, to happen in the first place. Yeah. And when we release that, all of a sudden, like the pain and the trauma and everything like that is released with it. So it's actually really profound. It's really simple. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing for me with Theta Healing because I studied many things before I found Theta Healing. And the key thing for me was the simplicity because I researched into quantum physics and quantum physics tells us that everything is made up of the one energy. So if we are one with all that is or that God or creator energy, whatever you choose to call it, mm -hmm. then healing has to be simple. It cannot be a difficult process. If we are one with all that is, then how can it be anything but simple? Yeah. And, and that is the key. Yeah. And I think that's really important because a big part about, you know, my beliefs personally is that we don't have to go back in secondary, like re-victimize ourselves, you know, for things. And 
And I like how, you know, when I've been interviewed in Theta Healing, you know, as a client, that is just a real matter of fact. You know, oh, absolutely. To get to the digging, it's not, you know, yeah. I really, yeah. I agree with you. I find that really, really powerful. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for being here. It's That's a really pleasure, Lauren. Thank you so much for your time. So, and thank so you to all the listeners for listening in. Lauren's amazing. And I'm sure, you know, she's, you know, keeping you posted with like really amazing speakers as well. So it's, it's awesome what you're doing, Lauren. And, and thank, thank you. you for allowing me to be part of it. Thank you.